is the great thing about video. I can get to show you. So if we build that C chord again, three, two, one, and I say I had a chord progression, which we will do. We'll have a look in a minute. Okay. Um, they went C and then A minor. Well, I need to be able to get to that A, ma a minor quickly without any fuss. So, you know, just to show you, I built my chord. Two, three, four. You know, I've got my A minor. So how did I do that? Well, it's all about the connections. Notice how finger two and finger one on the C chord, these two here, are also present in A minor. Two, three, one, right? They're still there. So there's no point in me taking them off the guitar neck when I'm going to get lead them anyway for the next chord. So what I do is this step, and I want you to try this. So we've got the C chord. When you've got that, strum the five strings. And then what I want you to do is take the third finger off and I want you to slide these two, but don't leave the guitar neck. Just slide them in parallel backwards a little bit and then add the third finger to the G string, as it says in the diagram, by going downwards. And you should end up with the perfect A minor chord like that, all right? So let me show you that again, just one more time. So three, two, one. Got our C. We go off, we slide back a little bit, making some room for the third finger, and then we put the third finger down, and then we strum. Now a lot of my students try this and it goes very well, but what they do first is they think they're Superman and they go three, two, one, oh, and then they get it wrong because they're trying to do it all in one. It's very important that you go step by step, okay? So literally, third finger off, slide back, third finger down, strum. It has to be stepped like that. When you get more confident, you'll be able to go like that, okay? So. Let's have a look at the next chord connection. In our chord progression, we're gonna have C and then A minor. The next chord we're gonna have is E minor. So let's have a look at the transition between A minor and E minor and see which fingers are related. So here's our diagram again, and we've got the A minor and E minor showing. So see if you can see which fingers belong to the E minor chord that were also present in the A minor chord. I'll give you a second to guess that. Okay, so you might have noticed it was, voila, yep, the second finger. So the second finger is going to stay where it is, and the third finger and the first finger are the ones that are going to have to move around. So we're going to have a look at the A minor chord, which is two, three, and one. Okay, and now we're going to look at the E minor chord, which was one, two. So we're on A minor. We said, didn't we, before, that the second finger is going to remain. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to push straight into the neck a little bit more to get some leverage, taking these fingers off so they're free, and then I'm going to add the first finger just above it on the same fret. And that should get me an E minor that works with all six strings. So here we go. Coming off with the third and the first, going down with the first on the A string at the second fret, gets me the E minor. So give that one a go as well. So just to recap what we've done, we've done C to A minor, and then we've done the A minor to the E minor. There's only one more chord to go. We had C, three, two, one. Off, slide, down. And then we had two fingers that come off to get to E minor, and we went, the first finger went down on the A string at the second fret. Okay, so. The next chord we need is G major. And like I say, you might know this chord already, but you might not have done this chord connection thing. So just try and give this a go as well. So looking at our next diagram, same kind of thing. You could probably see already that the first finger is the one that belongs to G as well as the E minor. So if I put some red dots in there, that'll make it more clear. So the first finger, yep, you've guessed it, is gonna stay exactly where it is on the E minor chord and the second finger is going to go down, and then the third finger is going to go down. So let me show you that. So E minor, one, two. Okay. And then, <coughs> excuse me, as I was saying, the second finger is going to come off, but the first finger is going to remain where it is. The second finger is going to go down on the third fret of the E string, and the third finger is going to go down on the E string, the high E string, sorry. And then we have a nice G chord. 
Okay, so that's all our chord changes. And if you study each group of those chords, you should have this. Off, slide, down. That gets us to A minor. Off with those two fingers, down with the first. That gets us the E minor. And then we come off with the second, put, put that on the E string at the third fret. The first finger still remaining where it was, just here, and the third finger down on the high E string of the third fret. Okay, and after a bit of practice, you might be able to get something a bit like this. And as you get faster at that, you'll notice that one finger feels like it's always staying there all the time. You know, and that's the aim of the game. That's what, how we've made it really smooth. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play the musical exercise for you. And basically, this exercise is coming up on the screen now, just just below me. Okay, and you can see it's just eight bars of the chord progression. Okay, and it starts with a C for two bars, and then it goes on to A minor for another two bars, and then we're followed by E minor for two bars and G for two bars, and we finish on a C. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but just before I do that, I need to explain why there are two bars per chord. The reason why I've given the two bars in there is because it's at quite a slow speed. It's at 80 beats per minute. And also, you're going to play the chord in the first bar, so I don't want you to think about anything else in the first bar. I just want you to get the chord right. After you've done that successfully, you're going to use the second bar, the amount of time in the second bar, to think about moving to A minor. So, you know, um, I'm going to play the piece of music in a minute, but just to give you a rough example, we'll have one, two, three, four. I'm going to think about it now. One, two, I'm going to do my movements. Three, four. And there we go. You see, I've had all that time to get my fingers over there. And this is the same for E minor as well, if I'm going to aim E minor from A minor. Let me play that for you now in its entirety, and then we'll talk about the C chord at the end. Okay, so hopefully that doesn't look too hard. It was quite simple, but the method here is to change chords efficiently, and I hope I've given that information across, and I hope that inspires you to go and practice now. Okay, but I want to talk about the C chord at the end, because you've noticed that, you know, how am I going to get from G, the last chord in the sequence, to the C at the end? Well, the reason why I've left this one out is if we have a look at the diagram for this, you'll notice that there are no related fingers. So there's no point in me putting any red dots on there, because they, all the fingers belong in different places for each chord. So let me show you that. G was 2, 1, 3. And then C was 3, 2, 1, wasn't it? So in order to play both those chords successfully, you have to literally just play them from bass strings to high. We always build from left to right. We talked about that earlier in the video. 2, 1, 3. 3, 2, 1. Now I know that I did that really smoothly, but that's just after a lot of practice. You'll get there as well. If you do it in steps, slow motions, two, one, three, three, two, one. You can gradually get that faster. Two, one, three, three, two, one. And faster than that. Three, two, one. No, three, two, one. Exactly. You know, that's how it's going to work. And eventually you'll just be able to jump and all the fingers will go down at the same time. That's where I'm trying to lead you. That's where I'm trying to inspire you to practice to, to that level. Okay, so all the other chords in the sequence basically work with related fingers. The last one, when you get a bit more confident, will be easy to go to once you practice going from G to C in the way that we described. And now we're gonna talk about how to download all of the material that you need to play along with this exercise. You heard it in, the, in a minute ago when I played it, but now you get to do it. And in the pack that you're going to be able to download, follow the link underneath and you'll be able to download all these files. I've included a Guitar Pro tab, I've included a PDF tab if you don't have Guitar Pro, which would probably be most of you. Guitar Pro, by the way, in case you don't know, is a fantastic music program. It allows you to write 
guitar tablature, guitar notation into the computer and when you press the space bar it plays it back just like a real guitarist. Well, I say just like a real guitarist but it's, it's enough to convince you it's a guitarist. Um, and it's great for composing with and stuff. And if you're not at that level, don't worry about it. There's another PDF file that shows you the tablature so you can just read that and play that on your own. Okay, so there's that. And then there's a backing track which has got the drums and the bass on it with no guitars. And then there's the version that I played you a second ago. Well, it's pretty similar. I recorded it the other day, but it's the same. Um, and so you can listen to how I did it and how it should sound. And then you can try it doing it yourself whilst playing the backing track. And a lot of you probably already had an experience of doing this kind of thing with guitar magazines. They always give you a backing track. So that's what I'm hoping you know, that you're going to get out of this lesson. You're going to be able to make it sound just like the track that I did with the guitar chords. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the final thoughts about this lesson. This lesson is a kind of lesson that I teach all the time. I tell people countlessly how to do this technique and it always works. Some one way or the other, it doesn't matter how long it takes the student to finally click with it. When it clicks, it clicks and it's going to click with you as well. And I, you know, I challenge you to go and get a song that has say five chords in it, a Beatles song. You know, I mean, it could be Let, Let It Be, for example, you know, Paul McCartney on the piano. You can do this on the guitar. It's only got a few chords in it. And see if you can see the connections between the chords that are in the song of your choice. It doesn't have to be the Beatles. It could be anything. But if you know what the chords are, then see if you can see the connections between them and study them like we did in this exercise. And you might find that changing chords in your favorite song is actually quite easy as long as you follow this rule. Remember, the rules were you find out the, the fingers that have to stay down because they're also in the next chord and you remove any fingers that are not in the chord and then you place the appropriate finger that needs to go somewhere else down afterwards. That's the quickest way to go to it. But if you want to prepare even more for that, I would try going looking at the chord diagram. And if we just look at that C chord diagram again, you notice it said three, two, one. You've left read it we read it from left to right. Well, read it from left to right and do the fingerings from the left to right in that order. You know, so say you had a chord like this, say it was G7. You doesn't I mean I don't have to show you the diagram, but if you look, it's a G7, we have a note here, a note here, and a note here. You would go three, two, one. One, because it shows you that in the chord diagram. And if it doesn't show you anything that's in the chord diagram, well, I don't think that's very useful. But there will be some diagrams out there that will show you this. Majority of them will. So there was my final thoughts on the lesson for today. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something. I hope you learned something that you haven't learned before. And I hope it inspires you to practice. Next time we do a video, we'll be covering something different that's relevant to beginners. And if you're a beginner, you'll need to watch that video because I'm always going to be doing different things. It won't just be chords, I'll be doing sliding, bending, all different kinds of techniques, you know, certain things that come from certain songs. I'll be covering loads of things. So the best thing you can do now is press subscribe, you know, and keep an eye on your subscriptions. And next week there'll be another video. I hope you've enjoyed it. My name's Simon Revel and this is Beginner's Guitar Blog.